Welcome to Spiritual Dialogues with Father Odon de Castro. We are here at Cariana Lay Monastic Community. I'm your host, Brother Lodi, and with us is Sister Tachi. Sister? Yes, Father. We were, uh, we were discussing, as you were dis- uh, telling us about the Pope Benedict's uh, analysis of the sexual abuse crisis, mm-hmm. right, Father? Would you like to continue? So we were discussing about the Vatican Synod mm-hmm. that has just been completed on the clerical abuse that is occurring mm-hmm. in the Catholic Church today. And um, after the Synod, of course, we were waiting for the results of the Synod. And in YouTube, you can see Cardinal Tagle of Manila, who was giving us a summary of what happened but it seemed that what he said was not what happened during the synod it was really a <clears throat> personal speech that he made mm, I see. and from his speech it seems that he did not tackle the analysis of what was the problem and what was the solution mm-hmm. there was none in his uh, talk and his address mm-hmm. And so we went directly to the document that was produced by the Vatican Synod. And it simply says that um, this is a problem. We don't know the analysis. We do not know the solution. So we're going to leave everything to each bishops in their bishops conference. Now, because of this, we have several questions that we raise. First is, if there was no analysis and, what, and no solution, what would the bishops of each uh, conference do? In what would they base Yes, in decisions? what will they base their decision on the analysis and the, the solution, solution and when there is no analysis and, and, and there is no solution? Mm-hmm. So we had the impression that the bishops were going back to their countries without any analysis and very no solution Mm -hmm. and it is a sad state because they were saying that um, 90 percent of the priests and the bishops had this problem 90 had this problem and 80 percent of them are active in this problem in this scandal in other words 10 percent only have well, ten uh, percent <laughs> are the only ones who are okay. able to control Believe. themselves. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, these are just uh, statistics, yeah, you yes. know, and we don't know really the real state of affairs. Yeah. And so we were wondering: so, what is the solution, and what's the the uh, the analysis, so that the bishops, when they go back to their own countries, can solve the problem if they find it existing in their own countries. Fortunately, as we said, after the synod, we discovered, we discovered, everybody discovered it, that Pope Benedict, even before the synod, had written down some notes, mm-hmm. called it notes. Mm-hmm. And he presented it to Pope Francis through Cardinal Parolin. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know what instruction he gave uh, Cardinal Parolin, but it seems his intention was to contribute to the synod that mm-hmm. was going on. Mm-hmm. So we knew that the notes were prepared before the synod. Mm-hmm. We also know that the notes were given during the synod. And we're wondering how after the synod there is no mention whatsoever about the notes. Mm-hmm. Until, of course, Pope Benedict had it published in a uh, not very well-known newspaper in Bavaria. And from there, it blew up. Mm -hmm. It went around the world. Everybody came to know about it. Here's a a copy of it. Mm -hmm. It says, The full text of Benedict XVI essay with regard to the church and the scandal of sexual abuse. So this is Mm -hmm. his speech. Or his note. His note. And clearly, we see, it's very clear, that he analyzed the problem and he gave the proper solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And since it was not given to us during the Synod. Vatican Synod, we are going to discuss the notes of Pope Benedict. Mm. And the first thing we shall discuss is the analysis of the problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, Padre. The analysis of the problem has two parts. What's going on in the world mm -hmm. and what's going on in the seminary and the Catholic Church. Okay. You have to look at the two pictures. Mm -hmm. So we can see the seminary in the context of what is happening in the world. It has to be like that. Okay. So Pope Benedict mentioned the fact that during the 1980s and so on, or 60s, like that, there was what you call the sexual revolution, mm. which everybody knows, of mm. course, you know. <clears throat> the sexual revolution is when the time when practically the whole world became too sexually oriented. Mm -hmm. Everybody was focused. focused on sex, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, this was um, the contributing factor is, of course, the United States and Hollywood, mm -hmm. of course, is the greatest contributor yes, yes. to this environment. Mm -hmm. Of course, Europe also was uh, guilty of it, but, mm -hmm. you know, they were not producing as much films, uh, films yeah. and uh, pornographic materials yes, and yes, so yes. forth and so on. But everybody was focused on sex, you know. All the advertisements about sex, whether it's a trying to advertise hamburger or a car, yeah. you can always see a woman in it, you know. Yes, yes. So, so, there was sexual revolution. Everybody was um, concerned with sex. Now, there is nothing wrong about sex. Sex mm -hmm. created by God. We have marriage, you know, and sex is precisely placed by God there for the procreation of citizens, new citizens for the kingdom of God. I mean, that's, so, that's a very good uh, mm -hmm. goal mm -hmm. for, for sex, to have new citizens for the kingdom of God, to produce mm -hmm. more citizens for the kingdom of God. That's the natural understanding for sex. Yes, Padre. And as long as you're in that natural level, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Because like all natural things, mm -hmm. everything is good. Mm -hmm. That's what the book of Genesis says. And God created this and he saw it was good. Mm. Everything. So God created sex and he saw it was good. Of course, Genesis did not say that. But well, when God was creating everything, that was the adjective always used. That he saw everything was good. Mm. When he created man and woman, he saw that it was good. So sex is good. But what happened in the 1900s was they corrupted sex. In it, what way, it was no longer used for the yeah. procreation yeah. of children to produce oh, citizens yeah. of heaven. It was going to be simply used for pleasure. Uh -huh. So it's hedonism, just for pleasure on the flesh. Yeah. So it was corrupted. Yeah. There is not a very strong tendency to, to, to use this kind of thing. Uh, to the satisfaction of the, of the flesh. flesh. Well, there's actually nothing wrong. We, we go to sleep and that's good for the... That is satisfying the flesh. Mm. Food is satisfying the flesh. Oh, there's nothing wrong in satisfying the flesh as long as you don't do it inordinately. Yes, as St. Thomas of Aquinas would say. No? So the goal of sex was removed and they substituted the pure pleasure of having sex. Mm -hmm. And that was the atmosphere that Pope Benedict was describing mm -hmm. during the 1960s. Yes. Mm -hmm. So everybody was thinking about that. And to think about that, sex just for pleasure is a mortal sin. Yes, Father. I mean, to think of sex to procreate children, to produce more citizens for heaven, is a good work. Mm -hmm. It's a good work. And St. Augustine wrote a whole book about that, the good of marriage. Mm -hmm. it, come, it has to come with marriage. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it has to be... A <clears throat> In other words, it must be a means to a goal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the whole world was saturated with the concept of sex 
for pleasure sex, for okay. pleasure sake. And that's called, Popper, they called it the sexual revolution. Mm -hmm. The old men during the 1960s were not very much affected by that. The old men. That, that, that's not you, Brother Rod. <laughs> You're quite young <laughs> for the 1960s. But the old men were not so much affected by it. But the young men were affected. Mm -hmm. And these were the people who were going to enter the seminary. Mm. Oh, I see. That's, that's not good, Father. Yeah, it's awful. Mm. Besides, that, that's the reason why all these problems um, mm. arose, you know. Okay. So Pope Benedict attributed the source of the problem from the sexual revolution of the 1960s. And that's true. Uh -huh. In other words, the boys who were entering the seminars during that time were not thinking of sex in the natural level. Mm. They were thinking of it in the unnatural level already. Already? Uh -huh. It's no longer sex to have children mm. and citizens for heaven. Mm. It's going to have sex out of pleasure. Mm. Engaging in uh, sexual pleasure. Yeah, just pure pleasure, so hedonism. Mm. It is a mortal sin. Yes, Father. Because you cannot have sex outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. you know? So out of mere pleasure, it becomes a sin. Mm -hmm. And the young people grew up and entered the seminary with that uh, mentality. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, the initial stages of the problem was beginning to appear in the sense that most of the seminarians were masturbating. Mm. And all the religious orders could not solve that problem. They knew it existed? Yes, because, you know, seminarians go to confession every ah, I week. I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, they did not reveal it in confession, but they... Um, the head of religious orders were very concerned mm, okay. that majority of them were masturbating. Okay. But they went to the wrong person to ask for advice. That the heads of the religious organization who were suffering from this malady were going to doctors, medical doctors. Uh -huh. uh, to solve the problem. To solve the problem. They should have gone to sacred scriptures yeah. or spiritual directors. Yeah. I or they were You're talking of seminarians? Yeah, seminarians. Yeah, seminarians. Uh, of religious orders. Um, I do not know of much. religious orders, religious, not even uh, diocesan. Okay. I'm not talking about diocesan. Because religious are, more st are stricter than the supposed diocesan. supposed to be stricter, okay. yeah. And the reason for this, I never heard anything about the diocesan. Mm -hmm. But the doctors whom the religious orders approached had approached me. Okay. But they do not know the solution. How come the heads of religious organization or, or congregation were going to them for solutions? How would they know the solution? So even at that point, the men of the church did not, were, know. Did not know how to solve it. Ah. Was the problem psychological, mm -hmm. spiritual? Well, it's spiritual, of course, well, spiritual. Right. Problems, yeah. But it is caused by temptations coming from the world that has been highly mm -hmm. sexualized. Yes, movies, films, pictures, yes. reading materials, etc. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a bombardment of towards that direction. Towards that direction. At that time, they were allowing seminaries to get in contact with the opposite sex, which during our time was not allowed at all. We were not even looked to, allowed to peep outside the window to look at girls. Yeah. That's why our windows were colored dark blue, so you cannot see through it. But suddenly, around 1960s, seminaries could go out. You know, there are seminaries where, where places for retreats, mm -hmm. retreats for girls, Huh? And during the retreats, the seminarians would take a walk with the girls. Oh, and of course, uh, movies entered the seminaries mm -hmm. and the congregations. They could go out for movies. They could watch anything they want. It was really a sexual revolution. And the sad thing was the seminarians were not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Precisely shown by the fact 
that the head of religious congregations mm, didn't, know. Mm. didn't know how to handle it. What could be the reason why they allow seminarians to go out with the opposite sex? Well, it's the idea that the seminarians has to be exposed to the world. They call know, it immersion. So something immersion, <laughs> something yeah. like that. With so families, with others. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they said that uh, the enemies of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now yeah. you go out in the world and then... Yeah, they were not ready for the world. Yeah. Exactly. In other words, Satan used the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. And... The men of the church were not ready for it. They did not know what to do when it began happening. But mm, yes. we have only one minute, please. So there we have the first reason and analysis of what caused all the present problem in the Catholic Church. Pope Benedict was right. It started in the seminary days in the 1960s, in which the environment became uncontrollable, uncontrollable for the seminarians and all those who are candidates for the priesthood, who later on would become the future bishops and the future cardinals. Thank you very much, Father. Uh, we are sorry we cannot uh, continue, Father cannot continue at the moment, but next episode, she will continue explaining why the confusion in the Catholic Church Thank you very much for watching Dialogues with Father Don De Castro. Please remember, his dialogue is the salt and light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Hosanna, Hosanna,